I got to thinking a little bit about this uh, Corona thing we're going through. Uh, I I worked a lot in restaurants when I was uh, when I was working. I'm obviously retired now. I understand where these restaurants are coming from. They're you know they're getting hit pretty hard and. They never really had a high margin anyway. Their profit margin on some of these were pretty, pretty skimpy. And so now they're, they're really hurting. And I thought of ways that HVAC might help. Now, some of this is all perception. You know, people perceive a, uh, a place to be, uh, clean or dirty and that may or may not be true but that perception is still there I can't deal with that stuff uh, but what I can deal with or at least attempt to is operations that HVAC people could take that would make a difference in how the customers in a restaurant are exposed to COVID-19. Now we all know the closer you are together uh, the more common it is for the uh, uh, virus to move from one person to another and the amount of time that you're exposed uh, to an infected person uh, is also a large factor. Well how do you keep a restaurant area clean? Now, I'm showing this little thing about uh, restaurant tables in China where they did this little thing where these several people were infected from one person at a restaurant. And he inf that person infected people at his table, but he also infected people that were at other tables nearby. And the indication is that the airborne virus traveled from one table to another. And of course, we've done a lot of this separating of tables and stuff. That's not going to help a whole lot for restaurants because if I have a restaurant that I've separated the tables on, that means I have less people that I can accommodate in the restaurant and you reduce the the number of people in the restaurant by half or in some cases by uh, one-fourth uh, they're not going to make any money they're, they're going to go belly up. Uh, they really need to have all their tables occupied and we can't really solve that problem in the HVAC but we can make some difference and so I thought of ways that we could eliminate as much as we can the transfer of airborne particles from one person to another in a crowded place like that. One of the simplest ways is 100% outside air. So the HVAC system pulls in 100% outside air and exhausts 100% outside air. That is probably the best we can do Hospitals do that. Air washing is another way you can do it. Hospitals do that too. Those systems, first 100% air, is going to increase the cost of heating and cooling that establishment by a pretty good chunk. And I'm not sure it's really practical. An air washer, yeah, that'd be good, but it again is quite expensive and it's a maintenance issue. You almost need someone maintaining it. If you're operating, say, a big hospital, you've got operating engineers that are maintaining this equipment all the time. In a restaurant, that's not going to happen. Uh, the systems are smaller and there's not going to be anybody dedicated to take care of that. And knowing how 
restaurants oftentimes work, not always, but oftentimes, uh, a lot of maintenance doesn't get done. So there's a couple of things there I don't know that are really practical. Uh, they might be practical in very mild temperatures and there may be some good with doing something like that but when we have extreme heat or uh, cold that's going to make those a monster. So okay another one's filters. Okay what can we do about filters? Uh, there is so much baloney out there about filters about which one's best and which one's worst and uh, pressure drop across them, HEPA, all this. I really don't think filters are the answer. Number one, it's a maintenance issue again. Uh, if you're using very high uh, efficiency filters that, that remove very small particles, they are going to plug up pretty quick, especially in a restaurant because there's a lot of grease floating around in the air and uh, so I'm not sure you could really be effective with filters and filters really you know where they're placed in duct work they're not really airtight by any means they probably filter the vast majority of the air but there's a lot of leakage in it I can't really say that that is a viable uh, alternative. It may sound good, you can advertise it and all this and say we got this wonderful filters, but in real applications, is it really work? Does it really work? I looked at one other item that I thought, I started going into this and looking closely at it, and you know, it might be effective. It's called GUV, germicidal ultraviolet. Now we all know UVC, you can use it in kitchens and stuff like that. A lot of guys that work in that stuff have seen these in kitchens. This is a little different because this is in the customer area. You don't want that UV light actually shining on the customers. It's, it's pretty damaging light this could be nasty stuff so you really can't just put a bunch of fixtures in there and dump UV light everywhere one thing the ambiance may not be what they're looking for and uh, but there is a solution for that that have been developed for certain occupational areas if you have high ceilings so with an area that let's take a number that sounds about right a 10-foot ceiling which is pretty common in restaurants most restaurants use uh, ceiling diffusers for their supply and the return so this gives a good area to put uh, some sort of intervention between the customer and the air movement. We have these lights and I've got a pick up here showing how these lights would actually work in a room. And that pick is, you know, it's shining the light above where everyone is. And they use louvers and so on. There's dedicated lights to do this kind of stuff. And what it's going to do is it's going to treat the air coming out of the diffusers and it's also going to treat the air going into the returns. That's the places we need it to do. These lights, some of the specs that have been talked about in these things are uh, using these lights would be the equivalent of 24 to 26 air changes per hour which is a pretty high number that's that's pretty high number so it's it's very possible that the use of these lights 
could be effective. And the, the other alternative is you could put UV lights in the ductwork. I don't find that to be a really good solution where uh, GUVs in the airspace and these are numbers I'm I'm using. I'll I'll give you a reference to the uh, to where I got this in the description of the video. Uh, they're talking about around 99% uh, effectiveness, where uh, UV lights in ductwork are around 70%. So I'm not sure that the in-duct systems would be all that great. And there's also been some tests out there that have said that the UV lights make a lot of difference inside the duct, but they don't seem to make much difference outside the ducts. Now that's telling me that most of this stuff is coming from the restaurant itself. I mean, that is where it's the, the uh, virus is going to be. Is not in the ductwork. It's going to be from the conditioned space. So, uh, I thought this was a, a good idea that should be followed up a bit. And I just wanted to throw this out there and see what the rest of you guys think of it. Because I would love to see the restaurants that I used to do work for be able to survive and this could be an effective way not not an advertised way not a perceptive way but actually would do the job so that I would feel safe going into one of these restaurants I think it should be looked at farther and I would just love to see some comments on it See other ideas that you may have. You may have better ideas than I do uh, to deal with this issue. But I thought that I'd throw this out and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, that's it on this one.